What's up YouTube, back again with another video. And today I'm gonna to be walking you through my latest speed model, a basketball court. Let's get it. So before we get started, smash that like button, comment, and make sure you subscribe to my channel. Also, follow us on Instagram at Veronica Studios, Twitter at Veronica Studio 2, and Facebook at Veronica Studios. So what I want to do with this video is I want to do something a little different. I want to walk you through my file structure for this project and take you through how I eat, made each piece. I created the basketball court lines by either taking a shape or drawing out a shape myself and sweeping that shape with a rectangle. I flatten the rectangle and that's how you get those flat lines on a basketball court. And then I made the basketball hoop. And from the hoop, I uh, created the rim with the torus. I created the backboard with a rectangle, obviously, made it editable, and made some incisions to get the red rectangle inside. And for the net, I made the net using a cylinder and I tapered that cylinder and I budged it a little bit to make it look more net-like. I also created the basket's arm and plate that goes into the ground by um, drawing out a custom spline and sweeping that with the rectangle. I created the rails by drawing custom splines and sweeping them with circles, similar to the basketball arms and the plates. And I use that technique for a lot of a lot of simple models that you see in this scene. For the stairs, I drew out a small, long rectangle, and I used a repeater to repeat each step. Then I altered the position of each step so that the stairs goes up at a 45 degree angle or whatever angle I wanted it to. The stands by the bushes are a series of interweaved rectangles. Next I want to talk about the grass and the trees. For the grass I started off by making one blade of grass using a rectangle tool and putting that inside of a taper and flattening that so it gets that long triangular uh, shape and then I made instances of each blade and change the size and rotation and things like that so you get a more clustered or random uh, effect. And then once I had a small patch of grass, I put that patch into an instance to create small, medium, larger patches, etc, etc. And for the trees, I used my original grass patch and I changed that a little bit around. So instead of having each blade face the same direction, I basically flipped the blades so that they go into all different directions to get a more bush-like effect. And I did that by using the cloner tool. That was something that I used a lot this project, the cloner tool, and it really saved me a lot of time using the cloner tool and pairing it to uh, whichever object I wanted it to. So for the trees in this case, I drew out branches using the spline tool and I connected my tree bushes from the grass blades that I made to each branch to get an overall tree look. So that's one good thing about the cloner tool is you can um, connect objects to different splines. So the possibilities pretty much become endless after a while. There's also little rocks spread around with the grass patches, if you can see those. And um, the rocks are just platonics. That is the actual name of the shape. I don't know how many sides that shape has, but I just used the cloner tool similar to the branches, except instead of pairing them to a branch, I paired them to a flat plane. So, that is how you see the rocks spreading out. And uh, I also added a randomizer to that so that each rock is at a different angle, uh, rotation, 
so that this scene can look more realistic. The last thing I want to talk about are the bushes. And this was new to me. This was a cool technique that I found to create the bushes. The bushes are actually uh, a series of a lot of different circles that I put into a volume builder and then I put into a volume mesher to add less faces to my polygons so that it, there is more of a, to give the bushes more of a sharper low poly effect. And lastly, I put my volume mesher into a displacer to give the bush a more meshed effect. And that's pretty much it. Uh, if you like this video, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. I actually created this court from following a tutorial video from Mobox Graphics. So I'll make sure to put a link below to the original tutorial so you can follow along if you want to. I ended up making some slight changes to my court to give it more of a personalized touch. But feel free to look at this video and look at the original tutorial to see both versions and to see how you want to put your own twist on it. And that's going to be it for this video. I really enjoyed making this model. I'm currently working on a series of other basketball courts uh, that I won't be putting videos together for because it's going to be part of a, a bigger project that I'm working on. But if you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm probably going to be trying some new content here in the future. I'm playing around with YouTube more and learning new things. So be on the lookout for some new cool videos coming up. I want to do another music video breakdown. I got some good responses on those. So it's been a lot of music videos that come out. Bear with me. I got some client work that I got to get out. But I'm definitely going to be bringing some heat on this YouTube channel. And that's it. So... Until the next one, I'm out.